So, Ambassador, thank you for being with us today at You and You Merit and giving a talk here to uh, um, our community on migration issues. So you've had a lot of uh, experience dealing with migration, specifically in a Mexican context, and we know that a lot is going on right now in the world with regard to migration, and there's plenty of new things also going on with U.S.-Mexico relations and relations of Mexico and other parts of the world. So I'd like to get your perspectives on, uh, on you know, what's going on nowadays and how you think um, the current state of affairs is also going to affect Mexican migration. Well, as, uh, as, as you said before, I, I think it's a very important topic. Migration has been with uh, humanity in all our history. Mm -hmm. And certainly being Mexico, the neighbor of the United States, which is the most important and powerful magnet of migration all over the world, mm -hmm. well, Mexico can and should be always involved in the problems and the challenges of migration. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, we have had uh, in Mexico an historical migration to the U.S. Mm -hmm. since the beginning of the 20th century, mm -hmm. and the Mexican migrants to the U.S. has been with enormous contribution to the economy mm -hmm. of, of the U.S. and also mm -hmm. of the economy of Mexico. I, uh, sometimes I really think that we have a common labor market at the end of the day because mm -hmm. The Mexican workers that are starting in agriculture, but now they are in all the services and in construction and in uh, all the fields of the economy, even in an industry, uh, they are very useful for the United States. In my previous experiences, I had the opportunity to talk to the employers and the Employers Association of the U.S., and they were really demanding Mexican workers. So now uh, we see uh, some changes coming in the close future, and some of them certainly we don't like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I can completely understand that. And how, I mean, in your experience, you know, how are Mexicans in the U.S. feeling, or, or are they behaving differently at the moment because of what's going on? Well, one of, of the points that they are facing now is, 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 is the threat to be deported or removed from the U.S., mm -hmm. uh, even in cases where they are not criminal, certainly it's not the case of mm -hmm. the vast majority of Mexicans. The vast majority of Mexicans in the U.S. are decent, hard-working people, mm -hmm. but uh, sometimes for minor offenses, uh, sometimes for a misdemeanor mm -hmm. or a mistake that you made when you were young, now you can face deportation, and that is uh, absolutely unfair. Because you are talking about cases where people are been in the in the U.S. for more than 20 years, or they have a family, there are children that are U.S. citizens, mm -hmm. that of course they are not going to be removed. Then the family is going to be split, and you are going to send back to Mexico a country where you are not living anymore. Perhaps your family is not anymore there. You are perhaps a person of 50, 55, uh, and you are not going to find easily a job even in Mexico. Mm -hmm. So I think that one of the most important responsibilities of a democratic country like is the United States is to enforce the uh, migration regulations with compassion, mm -hmm. with a humanitarian perspective. We are dealing about human beings, human families, about uh, every, every case is different and we can have also tragedies in yes. terms of, of these deportations and, and, and removals. Mm -hmm. That is one of the points. And the other point is that how the law enforcement authorities are going to identify people that are undocumented or that are irregular in the U.S.? Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes because of the color of the skin, sometimes because of the physical appearance, and that will lead to a lot of uh, 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 and tendencies that are just going to be discriminated just because you look Hispanic or because you don't look at the typical Anglo-Saxon uh, profile. Yes, yes. And so this can also, I think, um, possibly damage or have put strains on Mexico-U.S. relations. So how do you see that evolving in the future? Well, we have been always, always, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I, I started working in migration in 1985 in favor of a human rights uh, protection of our migrants yes. in a decent treatment of, of our migrants mm -hmm. in the U.S. because again they are not criminals and they are in the U.S. because they find jobs in the U.S. Yeah. Migrants are, 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 are very well informed. They know when they will be requested in the United States and when they are not. If they go to the U.S. is because they are being demanded by the economy and many many times many times they are there because 
the, the, the economic growth of the country. And I think that uh, the U.S. that has been always very open and very generous mm -hmm. in migration uh, has based part of the economic growth thanks to the migration, not only from Mexico, but from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And then, well, our, our task as a, the Mexican government is to protect these migrants and to ask for them a humanitarian treatment, a respect of their human and labor rights, and of course to apply the regulations according to the due process of law. Yeah, well, that is very clear. Thank you for those words and thank you for being with us today. Thank we you, appreciate uh, it. Professor. Thank you very much for your invitation. You're welcome.